So DICE have actually gone ahead and done it. They've chosen to change Battlefield 5's time to kill in the hopes of making it a better game, but is this what the community asked for? Absolutely friggin' not. But in case you've been hanging around in space for the past few weeks and just haven't really got a clue what all this time to kill, time to death stuff is all about, it's basically an issue that DICE have been working on trying to solve since the game came out. And truth be told, it's a pretty big issue that's been pissing players off and, according to DICE, causing them to abandon ship and literally switch the game off in frustration. Dying isn't fun in any game, but it can be particularly annoying in Battlefield 5, because it can often feel like you're getting absolutely shredded up in a matter of nanoseconds with barely any time to react or shoot back. And that's just with the weak guns. The time to kill has always been a hot topic of debate in Battlefield games, and even just a slight tweak to the system can completely transform the dynamics of the gameplay and make it feel like a totally different thing altogether. And with the launch of Battlefield 5, it's been pretty clear from day one that some guns needed minor alterations, and some improvements need to be made on the speed that players are killed to make things a bit fairer. With that said, there's been countless posts on Reddit, and loads of other creators putting up valid points across here on YouTube and on social media, that, well, Battlefield 5's original time to kill was completely fine, and apart from some fine tuning with certain guns, the devs should really just leave the bloody thing the way it is, and stop tampering around with stuff that really doesn't need tampering around with. At the end of the day, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And although I can't exactly say Battlefield 5's had a brilliant bug-free launch, as it's still got a few underlying issues, the time to kill certainly isn't one of them. Or at least it wasn't one of them anyway. DICE has spent the best part of the past couple of months sorting the game out with frequent patches to essentially squash bugs and improve it. And so far, they've done a pretty good job. The game still needs quite a few more tweaks, possibly a few more in the visibility department, in my honest opinion. Still wish the contrast wasn't so bloody strong all the time, but at least the game's getting there. There's a profound difference between time to kill and time to die, and it's pretty easy to mix the two things together and assume they're the same thing, if you're not really a veteran player. So for the guys who aren't completely sure, the time to kill is basically the time it takes for you to kill the enemy you're shooting at, pretty straightforward to understand. Whereas the time to die, on the other hand, is how it feels to be on the receiving end of those bullets, and the speed in which you're going to go down because of them. Most of the community, including myself, have pretty much agreed that the original time to kill that was put into the game at launch was fine the way it was, apart from maybe a couple of guns that needed some slight tweaks. But generally, all was well. The real problem people have been having with the game, along with the visibility and traversal on some of the game's terrain, is all down to time to die, which is linked in with time to kill, but is still basically its own thing. This is what everyone wants to be essentially fixed, so that gunfights seem fairer, and so it didn't seem like you were going down in the blink of an eye. And after tons of community feedback helping to direct DICE down the path they needed to go down, they've instead chosen to go down another path. The totally opposite path to what most people wanted. Basically, the time to kill has been increased for most weapons. How certain guns are affected exactly, I'll run over in just a minute. But they've basically decided to alter the damage multipliers rather than the actual damage values, and this has made most of the weapons weaker as a result. DICE has done this to try and combat the annoying time to die issues, but this has instead not only made it harder to kill other players quickly and skip from target to target, but it's also affected some of the other things in the game like attrition, that the original time to kill model was better suited for. There's a little graph that's just popped up on the top of the screen to highlight how the time to kill has changed, with the red multipliers in the brackets representing the original values. As we can see, most of these values were just set to a one times multiplier before, reflecting the base damage model that DICE intended to be in the game from the very start. But you'll also notice that a lot of these now follow 0.8 and 0.85 times multipliers, apart from the bolt action rifles and general buckshot shotguns and whenever you land a headshot, which is pretty much going to deal the same damage as before. Now this massively affects the game and means that in most cases, you're now going to have to land an extra bullet to kill, which means that general gameplay is going to play out in different ways, mainly negative ways. And the big time to die problem that DICE was trying to fix, yeah, it's still there. And although it's somewhat more manageable in certain cases, it still doesn't exactly reflect the time to kill very well, like it should. So they've basically done a double whammy here and shot themselves in both feet. Well done, DICE. But I'm going to take a little bit of a break from ripping into the new time to kill update to actually address some of the few positive factors that may have come with it. I guess you could say that they've given an indirect buff to snipers, shotguns and pistols, which are all now stronger because everything else is weaker. Though whether that's a good thing or a bad thing exactly depends on you as a player. Headshots are also going to be more dangerous now, as they retain the same damage values as before using a 2 times multiplier, so landing them is going to cut down those kill times by quite a bit. 
You could also say that it's now slightly easier to run to and from cover, across open sightlines, without getting melted quite as quickly by automatic weapons over mid to long ranges. Something that can be pretty annoying in some of the bigger maps like Hamada. And I also found that campers, hiding in bushes and around corners, were a tad easier to deal with, along with those pesky MMG users who just like to sit around in windows all day, mowing people down as they pass by. It does feel a little bit easier to survive and move around the map, which is what DICE was planning to achieve. But this comes at a pretty big price, because it's also really slowed down some of the core gameplay, and basically stops you from doing things as well as you could before, preventing you from having as many awesome Battlefield moments. I found that it was a lot harder to take on multiple enemies in quick succession, and if you get surrounded, a lot of the time, you're going to have to try and retreat if you want to live, because you might be able to take down one of those enemies, but you're going to be spending more time doing so, alerting his nearby buddies of your position, and allowing them to light you up, which isn't very fun. I was also reloading a lot more frequently, because of the fact that I needed more bullets to do the job, so although I was surviving a bit easier, I was also getting caught out more in between reloads, which is probably just as frustrating, if not more. SMGs, along with quite a few of the other automatic weapons, are pretty much hit marker machines now that just tickle people beyond point blank range, and the recon self-loading rifles are just basically terrible, requiring an extra shot to kill if you hit the lower body or a limb, which can really slow down their kill times and make them a hell of a lot harder to do well with. These new problems present more reasons to be frustrated with the game, as it's not only more annoying to die anymore, but it's also more annoying to shoot at someone and watch the screen fill up with hit markers, only to watch them drop to the floor at a slower pace. Some people are probably going to prefer these new changes, and I have to admit, at first when I tried out the new time to kill, I wasn't really that bothered by it but DICE have still left open a game mode called Conquest Core, which utilises the original time to kill values, basically letting us experiment between the old and the new, and I have to say that going back to the original time to kill felt like a much better experience overall, as I felt like I had more control over my situations and could spend less time focusing fire on one target at a time. Sometimes the slower time to kill works in your favour, seeming a bit fairer by keeping you alive for longer when you're running out in the open, being shot at by a bipodded machine gun and sat miles away in a bush, but most of the time it does the opposite, making it more of a struggle to flank and play with speed and skill. Truth be told, the original time to kill was a lot more fun, and apart from the time to die issues that still linger, it's just a lot better in my honest opinion. If DICE was to revert back to these original multipliers and just sort out the time to die, or netcode, or whatever the hell is causing people to die almost instantly, then I think it'll be a much more enjoyable game for everyone, even those so-called filthy casuals that DICE is trying to please with this new change. It's also been hinted that Conquest Core, which uses the old time to kill model, is being designed as a forerunner for Battlefield 5's hardcore mode, which I really hope isn't the bloody case, because the original time to kill shouldn't be treated as the game's alternative experience, as it should be the main focus, and built on from there. The original time to kill is a system that DICE have been working on all year to try and perfect and fine tune, a system that works, and to then shuffle that backwards into a separate server type and label it as hardcore just doesn't seem like a very good thing to do. If that does happen to be the case, then there's going to be a hell of a lot of people using Hardcore as their primary game mode, and the entire community is going to be split up. This certainly isn't the first time that DICE have been insecure about their Time to Kill model, and chosen to completely overhaul it, because if you remember back not too long ago, they did the same thing with Battlefield 1, only the other way around by making weapons stronger. This change was a success, and most of the fan base preferred these faster, snappier kill times, and the game remained in that state from there on out. This is a clear indication, along with the fact that Battlefield 3 and 4 had pretty quick kill times too, and were also well received, that people just like their weapons to be deadly, not pea shooters. And although I'll admit that the time to die is a big issue that needs addressing, increasing the time to kill isn't the way forward, because the time to die is still a big issue anyway. DICE are currently looking into these netco problems, and fingers crossed, they're going to hopefully improve it. And because of this huge backlash that the new sluggish time to kill update has caused, I honestly wouldn't be hugely surprised if DICE did revert back to the way it was before. Hopefully that might be the case, with the netcode issues fixed too. At the end of the day, it's easy to rip DICE's decisions to pieces and slag Battlefield 5 off. They've been met with a lot of criticism lately regarding a number of things, and this update just makes things even more problematic. But you've got to remember that this was all done with good intentions to try and improve the game and make players happy. Unfortunately, it hasn't, and DICE probably should have listened to the community, but there's still time to amend things and work out the best way to go forwards regarding the time to kill, and the game in general with all the Tides of War stuff. 
fans need to keep providing feedback and constructive criticism for this to happen. And although Battlefield 5's got a long road ahead of it before it hits perfection, I'm sure it'll get there in time. This also doesn't exactly make things very easy for me doing all the weapon guide stuff either, which I know quite a lot of you guys are waiting for, because having multiple time to kill variations just further complicates things, making them less direct. I'll be working on them soon, but I'd much prefer to hang on till the time to kill is set in stone, so that the guides are going to be as accurate as they possibly can when they eventually come out. So make sure you stay tuned to see those at some point in the future. But that's all I want to talk about at the moment regarding the game's time to kill. I hope it gets changed back soon, but if it doesn't, it looks like most of us are just going to have to adjust to these new changes. So anyway, thanks for watching guys, subscribe for more Battlefield content coming out in the future, and I'll see you in our next video.